All rise for the Honorable Polyglot Ikenna. So, I have been asked to judge these delinquent apps. Ah, uh -uh, I will judge you now. In this video, I'm gonna be ranking the 12 most popular language learning apps in the world. And there's going to be a special mystery app that I'm gonna to reveal to you guys, so stay tuned to the end. Listen, I don't know what it is, but there's three things in life that get me judgy. Art, language learning apps, and women's clothing. I Listen, no lie, when it comes to these things, I, I get a bit, I get a, I get a bit bitchy, <laughs> Especially when it comes to language learning apps. I think it's because language learning apps have two fundamental parts to them. They have the technical side, meaning how well does this app teach you a language? How effective is it? And then they have the emotional side, which is, does it motivate you to use the app every single day? Does it make you feel good when you use the app? And is the app fun? And the thing is, the emotional side behind language learning apps is even more important than the technical side. Doesn't matter how effective a language language learning app is, if it's not fun, you ain't gonna use it. <laughs> so this is your warning. If you're an sexual, if you're addicted to a certain green owl, this video is most likely gonna offend you. But at least it's gonna be funny as fu- So I'm gonna be ranking all these language learning apps from S tier to D tier. S tier basically means that the Greek gods themselves came down from Mount Olympus and crafted the app and D tier basically stands for dual. <clears throat> it just basically means that the app is pretty bad. So in order, the language learning apps that we're going to be going through is Drops, Babel, Busu, a mystery language learning app, which is this one, uh, Lingvist, uh, Close Master, Language Transfer, Memorize, Rosetta Stone, Tandem, Hello Talk, Pimsleur, and lastly, Duolingo. So you're gonna get all my thoughts on every single one. So, uh, first one up is Drops. Where would I put Drops? Drops is actually not too bad. Drops is a little bit limited. If you don't know, Drops is a place where you can kind of learn specialized vocabulary. Um, it's interactive, it's a little bit like a game, um, but it is, it is limited for what you get for it. So for example, drops, I know like you have to pay monthly if you wanna learn, use it for more than five minutes a day. If I'm just looking at the full version, I would probably say that drops is in B tier for the reason that it does what it's set out to do pretty well, which is teaching you specialized vocabulary. Um, and it is a bit gamified, it's fun to use, uh, my biggest drawback would be that it's somewhat hard to remember the images because they're all kind of grayscale. Uh, hence, it's a bit hard to remember the image association. But in general, overall, I would have given an A if there was a little bit more functionality. But I think, you know, it does what it set out to do. It is a bit limited. You can only learn specialized vocabulary for it. But it is a good place to go if you want to, you know, memorize specialized vocabulary. All right. So not, nothing too bad for drops. It wasn't nothing, nothing too judgy, right? The next ones up are Babel and Busu. They're kind of similar. Both of them are like language courses. Courses. It takes you from not knowing language and kind of goes through all of the basics of a language and you know They claim to get you up to an intermediate level. However, I kind of kind of doubt it All right, so now we're gonna get to Babel. Where would I place Babel? Babel is an interesting one Honestly, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna I told you I'm gonna give you my real feelings You might be offended, but it is what it is um, I do not like Babel for the reason that although it is well marketed and you might see it pop everywhere and you pop up everywhere and you might be like, oh, it pops up everywhere. It must be an amazing app to use. I do think it is actually fairly good when it comes to the technical side of language learning and actually teaching you a language. But where it fails is fun. <laughs> it is dry AF. It is so dry to use. I've gotten my friends to try it out. I've tried it out myself. Everyone that I've kind of got to try it out, including myself, couldn't use it past a day because it is, it, it feels like Mary Poppins brought a textbook to life <laughs> and it's great. It's an interactive textbook, but it is not fun to use. And personally, I have a huge personal gripe with apps that use stock footage. I don't know what it is, but it makes me mad when I see stock footage. I just feel like it's a bit lazy and it's just, it lacks a soul, if that makes sense. It, just, it doesn't motivate me to use it consistently. And again, even though I feel like Babel is actually pretty good at teaching someone a language, if it's not motivating you to use it consistently, if you hop on Babel and stop it for a month, you're not gonna have too much luck. Um, hence why I would probably put it in the C category. Busu is uh, Babel's kind of less popular cousin. I would say Busu, you know, Babel gets the girls or the guys, Busu doesn't. Um, 
it's less popular. I would actually rank Busu probably in the B tier for the reason that I feel like teaching wise, it is almost one-to-one -one with Babel. It's very, very similar. Busu does have the added benefit of there is kind of the whole community feature where you can get corrections from native speakers. And for that reason, that reason alone, I do think it's a step above Babel. Babel does have a lot of kind of other miscellaneous features, games, what have you, but it's just, it just doesn't hit. Um, I, I just find it boring. Busu, on the other hand, um, and I actually, I think both of them are kind of like this, but Busu wa nanka Busu desu ne. And this is just a problem that I have with, you know, apps in general. I hate when they use stock footage. It just, just feels lazy. I can't, I can't, I can't bear it. But um, I think B is a good tier for Busu. So yeah, Busu and Babel down. Now let's talk about this mystery app. So there is a mystery app that's going to be coming out and it might seem a little bit like, you know, there's a bit of favoritism going on, but it is S tier. How do I know that it's S tier? What is this app? Well, it's the app that I am working on. When it comes to language learning apps, I'm not necessarily content with any of them, although some are definitely better than others, and I'm gonna go into them. Hence, that's why I've been creating secretly my own app, well, not secretly, you guys know, but I've been working on my own language learning app for the last two years, and it is freaking insane. It is so cool. It is, it is almost undescribable how much better my team and I are trying to design this app to be versus all of the current language learning apps out there. Um, it is designed to be 10 times more fun and hopefully at least five to 10 times more effective than basically everything out there, Duolingo included. We're literally designing this app to have flashcards better than Anki, a better course than Duolingo and one that's much more enjoyable to go through. Social features just like Discord where you can have groups of language learners coming together. However, even better than Discord in the sense that you're actually going to have language learning specific features. For example, instantly being able to correct people in chat, uh, instantly be able to translate messages, etc, etc. And we're going to be having games and a lot of mini games that are our basically our minimum standard is kind of Pokemon Go, Minecraft level. Like we want things that are that fun to use, but all designed to help you review the words that you know and learn new words and to help you get as fluent as possible, as quickly as possible while having as much fun as possible. So if that sounds interesting to you, and if you're learning languages, it should. I would highly recommend to get on the mailing list now. Like pause the video, it's okay. Get on the mailing list for this app because it's coming out later this year and the earlier you're on the mailing list, the more of a chance that you'll be able to get alpha or even beta access to this app. So it's okay if you wanna pause the video, sign up to the mailing list. There's also a link in the description down below. I mean, the app, jeez, this app is like, it's crazy. It even has its own soundtrack. Literally, when you're going to be reviewing flashcards, we've created our own lo-fi beats that you can be listening to while you're reviewing your flash. Like, ah, it's crazy. I digress, but there's actually one other language learning app that I think could probably be an S tier, but I'm gonna get to it later in this video. So next app is Lingvis. Lingvis is a pretty cool app to learn vocabulary. Basically you learn vocabulary in context. It kind of suffers from the Babylonian, oh, I don't know what I'm saying, the Babel-esque kind of problem in that it's a bit dry. I feel like it's an effective way to learn words in context. It does its job well. The example sentences that it gives you while you're learning are high quality, they're well curated. Um, it's just, you know, if it was more fun, if it was more gamified, I would put it in the A category for sure. But as is, I don't think it deserves to be in the A category. The next one is Closed Master. Closed Master is very similar to Lingvist. However, it is more gamified, hence why I will probably put it in the A category just because yeah, I think it's A tier. I think it's A tier. You get higher quality sentences and higher quality kind of learning material out of Lingvist. However, Close Master, the learning material might not be as good, but it is much more fun to use because it is gamified. Next up is language transfer. So language transfer, I mean, I love language transfer. It is, it is a proper beast. Um, as an app, I would probably put it in A tier just because it, it's less, of an app and more of, you know, just a bunch of kind of audio files in app format. However, you know what? Language transfer deserves to be an S tier. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Language transfer is an amazing, whether you use it on the website or whether you use it in app format, app format is actually better because at least it saves where you left off. 
Language transfer is incredible. It's kind of similar to Michelle Thomas, but it is different in its own way and it's completely free. If language transfer has a course in the language that you're studying and you're still new to the language, I would highly recommend to check it out because I feel like language transfer out of any other program, even, even compared to Pimsleur or Michelle Thomas, it gives you the biggest shortcut to kind of understanding the structure and the grammar and the logic behind a language. For example, I'm currently learning German and within like, three lessons, I learned something in German that really confused me for years in Dutch. Basically, Dutch and German have the same thing, and in like literally like 15 minutes on language transfer, I learned something that confused me for years. So I really feel like language transfer helps you optimize your language learning. It is, it's, it's, it's properly good. It's, it's really good. Um, next up, we have Memorize. Memorize is an interesting one. I would actually, in the past, I probably wouldn't would have given it an A. Um, However, I think I'm gonna drop it down to a B for the reason that I like Memorize. Basically, Memorize um, is similar to Anki. It's kind of, you know, this flashcards. Memorize does something really cool where they went around with a huge Memorize bus some years back and kind of w traveled the world and got like actual reactions and actual native speakers and videos of actual native speakers pronouncing certain words and helping you learn the language, which I think is super original. I just, I just miss the old Memorize. I feel like Memorize used to be better in the, in the past. The decks were less kind of curated only by Memorize and they were curated by the whole community. Um, Memorize used to have a lot of kind of amazing kind of community generated mnemonics, which in recent years I haven't really seen too much of. I'm not sure if they've removed it or not. I could be wrong, but um, last time I went on there, I didn't see them anymore. Those community mnemonics were really helpful in terms of helping me remember certain words. So that's that's probably why I would drop down uh, Memorize to B. But otherwise, I think it would be an A. Uh, next up is Rosetta Stone. Uh, D. <laughs> I've never really been a big fan of Rosetta Stone. Back in the day, they used to charge you your firstborn child to, to learn a language, and it was not fun. I think it used to be like 500 bucks. Um, now they've moved to the subscription model like everyone, um, but I still consider Rosetta Stone a real tappy appy. They basically, it's just you tapping the app and matching pictures and the pictures are not even customly created images. They're freaking stock footage. Why? It's just, it just feels like a, I don't know, it just feels like a cheap app that it's just there to, 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 to make money and they spend 80% of their marketing and like 20% on their product, if that. Um, I've never been a fan. I don't think it's super effective when it comes to language learning. And if you're currently using it, I would recommend you to switch to, you know, language transfer, Babbel, Busu, Pimsleur, anything else. Uh, Cause I'm not, I'm not a big fan. Next up we have Tandem. Uh, tandem, instinctively, I wanna put it in A, I think. Basically you have Tandem and HelloTalk. They basically do the same thing. They connect you with language learners. They have a bunch of features, community features for, you know, whether you want corrections, whether you want to find, you know, people to talk to, find pen pals, language exchange partners. That's basically what both of those apps are, are meant for. I feel like Tandem is a little bit better uh, Tandem is also more exclusive, like they literally have to approve you, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, to, to actually use the app. So it's a little bit more exclusive. I feel like they care a little bit more about the community than HelloTalk. HelloTalk feels a little bit cheaper to me, but essentially they, they do the same thing. HelloTalk I actually would put as a B uh, because, uh, like I said, I think I feel like it's a, just a less refined version of Tandem. But they're both really good. One big warning is that if you are a girl there, you know, especially I feel like more so on HelloTalk than Tandem, but both of these apps, you gotta watch out for, for thirsty dudes. That's all I'm saying. You're gonna get a lot of messages saying like, hey, you're cute, let's talk. And you know, it's it's it can kind of devolve into flirting and romance as opposed to actually language learning. This is gonna be one really cool thing about the app that I'm working on that's about to come out later this year is that you're going to be able to connect with people, but if someone doesn't want to display what they actually look like and wants to be represented by their avatar, that's perfectly fine and it's actually encouraged. So um, you're not gonna be having people kind of flooding your DMs, uh, so to speak. But uh, both of them are pretty good. I, I would give the edge to Tandem. Then second to last, we have Pimsleur. Like Pimsleur, just, just come to the front of the line. Come on, just come to the front of the line. <laughs> 
Pimsleur has been my guy. So Pimsleur is an app uh, and a program that I've been using literally uh, for the last seven years. I've used it essentially with every single language that I've learned. I would highly recommend it to most people. As an app, I'm not sure I would put it in the same tier as language trans. It's a better app than language transfer, like as an app app. However, in terms of the content that's actually within, I feel like language transfer is somewhat untouchable and it's also free, whereas Pimsleur is paid and is, is, is not you know the most affordable, but it's still re reasonably affordable. They have a nice free trial. There should even be a link in the description to that if you want to try out Pimsleur. I would put it in the solid A tier. I feel like the app is great and it's good at what it does. The only, my only complaint about Pimsleur is I feel like they haven't really updated their courses since they've been recorded and some Pimsleur courses can be a little bit out of date or the content they can be teaching you is a little bit too business oriented. However, I love Pimsleur and I feel like it's an amazing program to get started into basically any language and for you to build confidence. So I would definitely rate it solid A tier. And then we have Duolingo. Where would I put Duolingo? I know I made a joke in the beginning that maybe I would put it in D tier. Ah, uh, uh, well, I can't take it out of D tier now, but <laughs> perhaps that's, well, uh, no, I, I, I can't in good faith put it in D tier. What is Duolingo? Duolingo is probably out of all the apps here, beside my upcoming app, is the only app that actually has a soul. It feels like it's alive, you can compete with people, it has a soul, it has an environment, it has a world to it. I love apps with worlds, hence why I'm creating my own, but Duolingo is literally the only one out of basically these, these apps that actually I feel like has its own world to it. So for that reason, and the fact that it's heavily gamified, it is much more fun than basically every other app on, on this, this, this list, besides the one I'm coming up with. Um, hence, I would probably put it in, if it's a supplement, I would rate it as an A. If it's a standalone app that you're only, you know, the only thing that you're actually gonna be doing to, to learn a language, I would actually probably put it at a B. Somewhere in between A to B. I'm, I, I give it, I would give Duolingo a, a B plus. I think a B plus would be fair. But yeah, that is my honest opinions on all these apps. Again, trying to target it more from the emotional side as opposed to just purely, you know, how effective they are. But when it comes to language apps, it is a combination of both. Um, but yeah, that is my thoughts. If you are curious, okay, what language learning app do I use as a supplement? Which one should I use as a main app? Which one should I use in which order? I did recently come up with my own course, which is called the Kenda Method. It's essentially a really, really cool video course, 32 videos on there. And it takes you step-by-step step through how to learn any language in a matter of months instead of years. It is my magnum opus. It is like an amazing, amazing course. It's already got amazing reviews. You get access to my Discord server and all that. But I also specifically in that course take you through, you know, what resources to use Use in what stage and which apps to use uh, specifically and which apps you can use but you shouldn't actually consider them to be like main activities but they're more side activities if that sounds interesting to you definitely check out the course it's at akenna.com and again make sure you know my language learning app is coming you guys can see my passion for it i am so pumped be sure to hop on the mailing list um, to kind of get a better chance of getting beta access to it uh, and to just stay notified on all that information revolving my app uh, there's a link down below for the mailing list but that is my thoughts i hope you guys agree but if you don't agree let me know why you don't agree or let me know why you agree downstairs in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next video apologies if i offended anyone but uh you know this has been a bit of a real talk with the camera all right take care